Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Monday, the 2nd of February, 2015. We're so honored to have with us James Tillman. Hello. What's up, man? Take it away when you're ready. Cool, thank you. A new place you've never been. Sights and sounds that you've never heard We find just ourselves in this place A joy we've never known In Shangri-La 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 James Tillman on Audio Tree Live. Hello, hello. I feel like because of the way we were joking earlier that I should like laugh after I say it. <laughs> hey man, uh, <laughs> Blake. Thank you very much for coming out. Um, to save your voice a bit, you can just go into your next song. I don't want to talk, oh. you know, make you talk way too much so that okay. it's all exhausted. Yeah, take it away when you're ready. Okay. Push people away or am I shy? Maybe 
baby, I'm shy Sitting all by myself All I've got is me and my good health But I want more, something real That'll feel like more than run of the mill Run of the mill alone again but I don't know what it is do I push people away or am I shy maybe I'm shy sitting all by myself all I've got is me and my good health but I want more something real that'll feel like more than run of the Tree Live with James Tillman. Hello. Yo, man, I'm curious, growing up, what kind of music was playing around your house and whether, yeah, and maybe some yeah. influence that you took from that or not, I guess. Or not? Well, no. Um, so I guess, I mean, we listen to a lot of different stuff. I guess my main, in terms of, I guess, vocal inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm from D.C. and Marvin Gaye is from there. So as soon as I found out about him, I kind of like went crazy. Yeah. Do you remember how old you were? Uh, or around maybe the first time I heard Marvin Gaye maybe ten okay where I listened and was like oh like this I'm guy's into amazing. that yeah but uh, I mean it was you know my parents had a very vast record collection okay so listened to Joni Mitchell a lot um, <laughs> hip hop a lot yeah. of different things I mean but I guess for me more um, the influences came a little later once I got to like the end of high school beginning of college where I started writing then I got really into you know, more singer-songwriters sure. and uh, jazz and all these other things that kind of have become big influences. But, yeah, you know, like a little alternative, too. Like, I love Stereo Lab. Cool. So I kind of, like, got lost in their catalog. and Yeah. Uh, what was your choice to play, I mean, as a singer-songwriter, mm-hmm. I suppose, to play electric versus acoustic just because you yeah. already had that? or um, Well, I don't know. It was kind of weird. I mean... um. I don't know if it was a set choice. I think it was more of like I really uh, love like jazz guitar sounds, mm-hmm. and um, so I tried to get a guitar that would produce make those that. sounds. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I got flat wound strings to give it a nice mellow tone. Yeah. And, and so I had and I looked into like the Epiphone Black Beauty, which is what I have, and some other different, you know, guitars like that. And sure. It's like, this is how I want the sound to. To kind of be. Yeah, you know? right on. Just kind of not, you know, I didn't want it to be like a cliche singer songwriter sure. or an acoustic. And yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. And it allows for more versatility too if you wanted to start. I mean, you're playing clean now, obviously, but if you wanted to put some like fuzz on it or something, you yeah. know, it's more, it's easier, I suppose, to do that for way. For sure. Did you play in any bands before like the James Tillman project or um, anything? 
Or not really? A little bit. I mean, I would sing like as a guest vocalist for some of my friends. One of my friends uh, has a jazz band. I used okay. to sing standards and stuff with him. But right on. No, other than I was in choirs and... You know, I played clarinet, so okay, it was kind of random. Yeah, it wasn't until like I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that I kind of like set all of that stuff up. It's interesting how that background, like, um, I, I played trumpet in mm. high school and middle school, and then you know, took a break for a long time, then picked up guitar. And I wonder mm. how it affects the way that you play guitar, the instrument that you played first. You know, like yeah. a clarinet, or because I think I want loud sounds now, which maybe has to do with the fact that I played trumpet, or maybe it's totally random. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Like lead ideas or you know. yeah, I mean I know for me it was I, I don't know I found find that the clarinet has been more of an influence in terms of like vocal mm. things. That oh I sure, do. yeah. Um, but not really with guitar. I mean I kind of taught myself how to play guitar, so it's very like different from being in classical sure. training and yeah, even yeah. singing you know jazz and stuff like that. It's a little more. Uh, free yeah you know which is cool yeah definitely yeah with the clarinet and your voice i mean i think like that sweetness that exists in a clarinet is what you're clearly yeah. emulating you know now that's yeah, cool man. Yeah. all right man yeah well thanks for coming out going to your thanks next for song having me. Ready. of course keep sipping this tea yeah dude. <laughs> got it we got three cups over there so that's just cups. get the man another if he needs one. <laughs> awesome um, this one is called cheekbones She brightens up my days She's cheekbones and shade But she brightens up my days And sometimes she smiles But not that often
Audio Tree Live with James Tillman. You can take a sip and go on to your next song, man. And I will say that um, there's one more date with Wild Child in Milwaukee tonight, correct? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Okay. Yes. Tomorrow night. So you can check them out there if you're in and around the Milwaukee area. And debut album should be out in springtime, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, uh, looking like April 29th okay. or before. So Cool. Any details on that that you would like to share? Or? Um... That's pretty much. I mean, it's just in the works. It's it's definitely being recorded. Um, I haven't settled on the name I want for it okay. yet, but it's gonna be out. Uh, cool. Okay. Soon. So look for it then. Take it away, man. All right. Cool. <laughs>
Audio Tree Live with James Tillman. So whether it was a band that you toured with or just somebody that you saw at a festival or a show, yes. um, a 2014 concert that really stood out to you. 2014, well... Yeah. Or even within, yeah, just well, within recent the, time. Yeah, I had the chance to uh, tour, opening up for Tune Yards. Yeah. And that was crazy. Cool. Amazing. Like, yeah, fans of theirs, I assume. Super yeah. fans. Yeah. It's, it's really crazy because um, in New York, I worked at... Um, this venue, Jazz at Lincoln Center, and I was an usher there. Okay. And Tune Yards performed there in like 2011, and that was the first time I'd ever seen them. Blown away. So then to have the chance to open for them a few years later yeah. was really trippy, Th but that's in a good awesome. way. Awesome. Yeah. Did yeah. you play? Did you play a run with them or just one yeah. show? Okay. Uh, we yeah. played for the entire month of October. Okay. Pretty Sweet. Much. Yeah. So. Yeah. And we actually we had played in Chicago. Uh, we did Vic Theater, and then. Milwaukee. We did, you know, a few of the same cities. So. That's awesome to play such big venues too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's I. I mean, because they play like decent sized rooms. Yeah, for big theater. Sure. I think that was the largest show I've ever played. And it was like twelve hundred people. Jeez. And it was just like, all right, I'll be yeah, like, oh, like okay, I better do it then. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's super inspiring and just like to see them, you know, night after night. Yeah, it's such a high level of excellence. Was like very inspiring that's cool yeah and they're super nice people too which was amazing yeah um yeah. as far as size of shows i mean mm -hmm. when you play a 1200 cap show versus like 50 people in a coffee shop or whatever <laughs> how, how do you approach that differently like do you try mm -hmm. and put a different attitude on stage you know well that's the thing that was interesting because as soon as i found out i was going to tour with two years i was like oh great but then they had specifically requested that i do it solo so I was okay like, i was okay. like oh no like <laughs> two yards like you're gonna have this high energy yeah and you know but after talking with them and they were like no we kind of just like what you do and want you to do that you know open for us and do that so then that kind of put me in the mindset of like just um you know going out there and just enjoying what you do and yeah. it'll, it'll tra that'll translate you know yeah so i haven't really thought i don't know i got to a point where i just didn't think about it sure you know and then and the nice thing i guess is like in some of those venues like vic theater for instance like the way that it's set up you with the lights you can't really see past like, okay the so, first row, so, it's so there like, are 18 people there at the show people, basically like and then. A nice little, <laughs> so that, that's like, funny yeah that helped me a lot but yeah no, it was it was definitely a great experience i feel like i grew a lot just in that month. Oh, definitely, yeah. dude. That's really cool. Did um, was there a thought of yours to like bring a bassist and drummer or something like that when they first brought up yeah. the idea? I okay. was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna play with my band. Yeah, you know? and then they were like, no, we want you solo. So yeah, then it was kind. I mean, and the interesting thing about that is like it was a nice kind of situation to to return to playing solo. Sure. Before that, you know, I had formed a band in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We've been playing and. That was the setup, and then to kind of go back to how I originally wrote a lot of these songs was like a nice sort of thing. Yeah. So. Did you find that you were approaching the songs differently, like maybe playing them in a different way than you normally would, or like, or mm -hmm. you had ones that you preferred now over others? You know. Yeah, definitely had some that I I prefer. Um, I guess the thing, the one thing that changed is like shortening some of them. Okay. Because like you know now with the band it's like especially playing live we wanted to kind of have these like longer arrangements where yeah. we you know let the, the beat build and sure sure different like vibe. sections different movements within each yeah. song so yeah so we kind of you know I, I took all those away and just really focused on like the songs it made me kind of realize that like if you can write a good song on like just guitar and you know voice or whatever then you'll be okay so yeah. i kind of like revisited a lot of them i was like okay like they're they're gonna make it yeah, yeah, that's probably pretty rewarding to find that in a band they were cool. Now you're stripping it back down. And you're like, oh man, well this might not work again. Yeah. But, but the ones that do then show that you wrote a good one. I yeah, guess. yeah. <laughs> there were a few that I was like, okay, this is not. Gonna, this <laughs> is like, not gonna no be man, this is gone. This yeah. is not gonna be opening the ten yards. But <laughs> but oh yeah, it was great. Sweet man, uh, thanks for sharing. You can go to your next song. Okay. Ready? Closing both my eyes 
shutting out the world, going deep inside within me. So much has been lost in this world. So I'm looking for a love within. Audio Tree Live with James Tillman. You can take it away into your last song, man. And again, he's playing in Milwaukee tomorrow night with Wild Child and look to the end of April for the debut record. Yes. Thank you so much, guys.
said you came and loved me and my soul smiled anew thought I'd never write a song again no inspirations in my life melancholy sanity decline and then you came and showed me a life I'd only dreamed of said you came and loved me and my soul smiled anew Audio Tree Live with James Tillman. Thanks for Thank you. Me. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Audio Tree family. Much love. Thanks to Dictator Cabs for the beautiful sounding and beautiful looking cabs. Thanks to Goose Island. Thanks to awesome people in the studio, sound engineers, Thank you, you, Rick Fritz and Patrick. Uh, camera and lighting crew for hooking it up. Viewers, thanks for watching. Support James by downloading the session when it comes out in a few weeks and send a shout via social media to us or him if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studios, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.